All right, hey guys, I know it's been a while since I've uh, had a video out, but I'm gonna take you on a little tour and test drive of the 2020 Ford Escape. This is a titanium EcoBoost four-wheel drive. It's got your tow hitch, dual exhaust, these decent looking 19 inch rims, gray and silver, 255, 55, 19 is your tire. The color is dark Persian green metallic. Looks blue to me. Pause to read your window sticker there. Your options total is 39,210. It's pretty nice. Got your LED headlights, fog lights, your typical new Ford grill. Front sensors, rear parking sensors. You do have your lock and unlock, as well as your number pad on the door, kind of hard to see. Inside here, you do have some nice padded material up here. Um, this really weird work truck looking design. Um, some padded leather here. Some cheap plastics here, as well as around the unlock, lock, and your driver setting. Plastic door handles. You do have your banging Olufsen audio system. Don't know how many speakers. Hard plastic here. Same old stuff here, hard plastic. You got some nice seats. Um, they have widened them, I feel, for 2020. Bolsters are nice. So let's get in and start it up. It does have the uh, wireless key. You do have your lock, unlock, remote start, trunk, and your panic button. But to start, just put your foot on the brake and press the engine button here. That is inconveniently located on an angle. It will rise to your position and your heads up display will come up. And when you power off, your seat will go back and your heads up display will go down. Kind of cool. You do have your fully electronic. It is popping up again. Fully electronic. Oh, I found a little. It's not good. A little fit and finish issues. I mean, it is a brand new bottle, so, you know, I don't know what that means. But you do have your fully electronic gauge cluster here. Uh, I'm just going to briefly go through it since it's new. Um, you can go trip one, tire pressure, just your regular calm screen. Um, you can select your screens and change which ones you want there. So if you want more screens, eco behavior, trailer light check, seat belts, and your auto start stop. Okay, it won't let you do more than that. So, but you can also go to audio and change your audio sources, your navigation, input your destinations, you know, all that fun stuff, your phone settings and another display setup ah i see so you it's just kind of like your other fun stuff yeah so that's that's all cool um to change this screen this button down here will change what it looks like so you're gonna go to normal eco will give you kind of a greenish like hue with you know being all eco-friendly and whatnot um sport mode is going to be red it's going to give you a few more uh performance type things i do like those gauges you do have paddle shifters um i am changing this by this button here by the way you have paddle shifters plastic not really much more expected in this vehicle it does kind of tighten up the steering a bit um and then you could change to slippery which will make it this bluish icy looking screen uh, deep snow and sand it'll turn off your stability control and give you some i don't even know what to explain that color as but it looks nice let me push the vent that way uh, normal mode just back to what I had it on so you do have a few buttons over here um, this one is for your uh, cruise control the following distance and all that fun stuff um, so you can set it here you know how far 
You can see that moving as I'm pressing it. How far, up to four car lengths it looks like. This is your lane keep assist. A little steering wheel will show up down there if it is on and your cruise control cancel as well as some volume controls. Don't really like how those are placed, but that's all right. Guess it'll do justice for you. You do have your auto drive maybe? I don't know. <laughs> um, back and front windshield wipers. And I believe this is how you adjust. Oh, heads up display adjustment. Oh yeah, position. So you can adjust it. You won't be able to really see that based on 123 miles per hour. Yep, let's do it. Brightness, I want that thing all the way bright. Yes, vertical size. Yeah, big. Perfect, it works for me now. Content, you can put what you want up there. Distance, lane keeping system, all that fun stuff. So that'll all show up right there. Like I said, you guys aren't really gonna be able to see it. Maybe if I put my hand behind it, you can. I don't know, really. But it has it, so that's kinda cool. And I do like it, you can shut it off and it'll go down and it won't be there, but I, I do think it's kinda cool. Like I mentioned before, your inconveniently placed engine start-stop button. I do believe it's, you know, there I go, got the vents, uh, a little bit better to have it there so you don't bump it on accident. But, like I said, it could have been maybe more up here or something. That's all right, though. It's it's there. Uh, here's your Sync 3, all revised and new, you know, pretty basic stuff. It's not really hard. Here's your home screen. And you can adjust all this too. You have your phone here, your radio here, and your maps here. Here's your phone menu. I don't have a phone added. Your navigation screen. Um, it does have pinch to zoom and your uh, movement, a little laggy. You have apps. You can add more mobile apps if you have a phone in here. So it'd be like your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Here's all your settings. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but there you go. Audio system sounds good. Don't wanna get copyrighted. Um, coming down here, I do appreciate that you have the temperature down here as well as up here. I know I've kind of griped about it before, but um, at least that way, I guess you got two, you know, uh, both automatic, dual zone, you got your fan speed, heated seats, no cooled in this model, heated steering wheel, don't need it. Um, all your defrost, like I said, your auto, I don't know why it has three, whatever. Anywho, uh, there's your passengers. You do have a USB-C port down here. So they finally got to upgrade to 2020 and you have USB-C. Unfortunately, you'd have to, if you have an iPhone, you're gonna have to buy a, USB-C to lightning adapter if you own this vehicle um, Because there's not one right here. I haven't checked the center console yet, but you know Here's your Prindle or your hockey puck Pretty simple Put it to where you want you can't adjust it while you're driving So it's not like you're gonna hit it and go you can go to neutral But you can't go to reverse or park and then you got your manual mode here um, Down here is your driver controls so what mode you want to be in your park assist it does have full parking um i don't even try using that anymore auto start stop off and your parking sensors off center console is leather stitched and padded okay you do have a full regular usb port in here so i do take that back about having to get a different cable and a little pen holder there and a little pen holder there that looks like it's literally just been you know, glued on there, stuck on there by sticky tape. Let's go take a look at the back seat real quick. We'll take a look at the trunk and the engine too. So this is uh, supposedly got more legroom than the Tahoe does, which I don't know how much I believe that, you know, whatever. It does feel pretty roomy back here. This headrest is stabbing me in the back. Um, I am 5'8", I sit back a little far, but you do have a cutout. You do have a 110 volt microwave outlet as well as an armrest, adjustable two stages it looks like. Um, these seats do, oh, they recline. They do recline, they recline pretty far too. 
surprisingly. There is your ginormous panoramic sunroof. It only opens till about here, but you know, I guess it's there. It is tinted, which is nice. I found a lot of vehicles aren't tinted. Um, I am happy to say that the materials do carry over through the back seat, which is something Ford has been horrible at. Actually, I take that back. That is hard plastic, but whatever. Again, with this weird work truck, very, I don't know. Banging all some speakers here. So I think it's like a 12 speaker or something like that. I couldn't tell you. Uh, nobody really cares about the audio systems anymore. So. Here's your rear trunk. I don't know if this has the underfoot thing on it or what have you. We got another 12 volt back here. You're banging all this subwoofer back here and a mini spare and a pretty cool looking rim, I guess. So at least you don't got a crap rim. Uh, there's your cargo cover, your trailer hitch, and like I said, I don't know if it, oh, it does, so it does have the foot feature. Let's take a look under the hood, see what's under the hood. I think it's the two liter. Not quite sure. Didn't really do much research on this before I uh, took it. Oh, it doesn't have a hood latch because you got double click it. So that is your two liter. Oh, the whole hood's really light. Two liter EcoBoost connected to all four wheels with an eight speed automatic transmission. So let's take it on a little, quick little test drive and uh, see how she drives. All right. So I got my phone crushed in the headrest. Um, I don't really feel seatbelts for safety kits. That this is too different from uh, the outgoing escape. It does drive pretty smooth, I would have to say myself. enough power for what it is I think uh, I'd really like to test drive the hybrid version when it does finally arrive uh, ride is pretty smooth can't really test out the four-wheel drive in it but I'm sure it works fine just like every other vehicle does Engine's a little buzzy for my liking, but I don't know what anybody expects out of this thing. It will, it will spin the tires. So that is nice. Feels a little like the transmission, like the engine and trans is not really having it. I feel some jolting and stuff of that nature that really does not impress me with it. But I have noticed in a lot of these little four cylinders with the hot big transmissions, even my Equinox is pretty bad at it. Um, auto start stop works. Let's go to our eco, eco screen and just kind of chillax and drive. I don't need to do all that fun stuff. The steering does numb down. Overall, it's pretty, like I said, it's pretty nice. Um, is it necessarily something I would drive every day? Not for me. Um, if you're the type of person that, you know, is in maybe a city or you know, you do live in the country and you have, you know, family members or you're just, you know, a single college student. This really isn't a bad vehicle. Granted, what you're seeing is the loaded titanium, but, uh, you know, 
you can always step down to an SE or SEL. You don't need all these fancy features. Unless you can afford them, and then go ahead and get them. But I don't, I, I really do think $40,000 for something like this, I mean, isn't necessarily worth it. But, like I said, it does drive good. It's relatively smooth when driving it in eco mode with a normal foot. Um, fuel economy, who does it? Who, it basically drives for you. I mean, really, I don't even have to touch the steering wheel right now, and it's doing just fine. See how good it is at following the car in front and keep the hands on steering wheel. It does ride good. It, uh, it isn't bad. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe if you'd like some more videos. I'll do what I can. Haven't been too on the video game lately, so thanks for watching.